Good morning, class. Hey, today we're going to read a fun book about Flat Stanley. Do you know about Flat Stanley? This is Flat Stanley. He was laying in bed one night and his bulletin board fell on him. Made him flat as a pancake. And you know what? Now he can travel anywhere he wants. We're going to read this book, but did you know there are other great Flat Stanley books? Mrs. Craft has a whole bunch in her room. And if you love chapter books, look at all these chapter books he has. There's exciting adventures that he goes on. Now, for the students in Mrs. Craft's class, you received, oh, where did she go? You received a flat Mrs. Craft. I lost mine. That's right, a flat Mrs. Craft. Oh, wait a minute. I know where it is. Hang on a minute. I'm back again. I went on an adventure across the room, but you got a flat Mrs. Craft. Where are you going to take me on the new adventure at your house? Where are you going to take me? Am I going go to get to go in the car someplace? Am I going to play outside? Where am I going to get to go with you? I can't wait to find out. Remember, you're going to send me a picture either by text message or maybe Facebook, whatever, to show everybody what adventure you and I have been on. Well, I thought it would be fun to read a little bit about Flat Stanley. Okay, so listen and close. Here we go. Stanley Lambchop lived with his mother, his father, his little brother, Arthur. Stanley was four feet tall, about a foot wide, and half an inch thick. He had been flat ever since a bulletin board fell on him. Stanley's family was used to him being flat. They didn't think much about it, except when Mrs. Lambchop needed to clean behind the fridge. Or when Mr. Lamb Chop forgot his house key, which happened quite a bit. To the Lamb Chop, Stanley was perfectly normal. That's why Stanley was surprised when Arthur asked, Can I take you for show and tell? Stanley frowned. You mean because I'm so good at wiggling your ears, said Arthur. Miss Plum really wants to see it. Oh, said Stanley. Sure, if Miss Plum said so. Stanley felt his face turning pink. It always turned pink when Miss Plum's name came up. Miss Plum was the prettiest teacher in the whole school. Thanks, Stanley, said Arthur. No problem, said Stanley. That's what brothers are for. Arthur smiled to himself. He knew the real reason Stanley was going to show and tell, but he didn't say a word. At school, Arthur's classmates took turns showing and telling. Sophie showed her mouse squeakers. He just loves cheese, she said. Manny held up his grandpa's false teeth. My grandpa loves cheese, too. Arthur introduced Stanley, who wiggled his ears like crazy. My goodness, said Miss Plum. Today, I have something for show and tell, too, Miss Plum added shyly. She held out her left hand. A big ring sparkled on her finger. I'm getting married, said Miss Plum. Stanley felt his heart sink. Miss Plum, married? The other kids jumped up and crowded around to look at Miss Plum's ring. Let me see, said Sophie. She bumped into Manny. Squeaker slipped out of his hands. Her hands. Ouch, said Manny. Watch it. He dropped his grandpa's teeth. The false teeth bounced twice, then clamped onto Squeaker's tail. Weak, squeaked those squeakers. He took off running. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, dear, cried Miss Plum. She reached to grab squeakers and her new ring flew off her finger. To Stanley, the ring seemed to move in slow motion. He watched it sail towards squeakers and fall straight down over the mouse's head, where it landed like a sparkly collar around his neck. Poor Squeaker squeaked again and ran even faster. He zipped across the classroom, scampered up a bookcase, and vanished through a crack in the ceiling tile. My mouse cried, Sophie. My grandpa's teeth cried, Manny. My ring cried, Miss Plum. Stanley stood up. I'll save you, Miss Plum. I mean, I'll save your ring and Squeakers and the teeth. Stanley raced to the spot where Squeakers had vanished. Arthur, he said, that crack in the ceiling, it's like our window at home. Give me a boost. Mm -hmm. 
On the count of three, said Arthur, one, two, three. With a grunt, Arthur pushed Stanley high over his head, just as he had a dozen times before. Mr. Lambchop really did forget his keys a lot. Stanley slid right through the crack. I see squeakers, Stanley yelled. Come on here, boy. Come here, boy. Come on. Below, the students heard crashing and thrashing as Stanley chased the mouse over their heads. Go, Stanley, go, said, yelled Manny. It's no use, Stanley said, panting. He's too fast. Then Arthur thought of something. Sophie, where's Squeaker's cheese? Right here, she said. Arthur grabbed a slice of cheese and flung it through the crack. Stanley, try this. The crashing stopped. The thrashing stopped. Then the class saw Stanley's arm poke through the ceiling crack. Squeaker sat in his hand, happy nibbling the cheese. Stanley's other hand po arm poked out. The false teeth and the ring dangled from his fingers. Last of all came Stanley himself, stretching out of the crack like a boy-sized strip of taffy. Oh, Stanley, said Miss Plum, once he was safely on the ground. You're my hero. She gave Stanley a big hug, and Stanley felt his face turn, face turn pink, bright pink. Where, what's wrong with Stanley, asked Sophie. Arthur grinned. His face always turns pink when... Then Arthur stopped. He looked at Stanley. When he's been wiggling his ears, he said. Oh, that was nice of Arthur to say that. Thanks, Arthur, whispered Stanley. No problem, said Arthur. That's what brothers are for. Did you like that adventure with Flat Stanley? I hope Mrs. Kraft doesn't end up in the ceiling tiles chasing a mouse. Ah! Make sure I have a great adventure with you, and we'll read more of Flat Stanley's books so you can enjoy some too. Have a great day, and I will talk to you later.